Okay. Right. So first, we know you are fully aware of what Sendpost is, what we do. Sendpost is a multi-channel marketing platform. Uh, we offer multi-channel marketing options or, or communication channels to reach your sales target and your communication goals. We have the email email marketing service where you can send bulk email service, bulk email marketing messages and all that. We have landing pages, we have SMS, we have messengers, we have that. Under messengers, we have Facebook Messenger, there is Facebook chatbot, Instagram chatbot, Telegram chatbot, um, WhatsApp chatbot. We have web push notification, we have CRM. Just go to our website and um, you can see all those, all those services you can make use of. All right, so why is email, email design important? Um, I'm sure you must have received emails that you basically must have ignored, maybe because of some reason. One of the primary reasons is because the email doesn't, number one, doesn't look so legitimate to you or the email doesn't catch your attention. So according to statistics, um, people send and receive over 260 billion emails each day. Uh, with the number projected to increase over 347 billion uh, in 2022. So this gives you an idea that you need to find ways for your emails to stand out. And one of the most important thing is to get your emails delivered or appearing in the inbox instead of any other folder. We have the spam folder where unneeded or unsolicited emails are dropped. And we have the, um, we have the promotional tab. If you're using Gmail, we have the promotional tab. We have the social tab. And emails that are regarded as social emails goes there. And if you go and check your social tab on your Gmail account, you'll see your Twitter emails, your Instagram emails, your Facebook emails, they are categorized as social emails and they go there. Then we have promotion emails. Now, the reason why Gmail put promotion emails on its own tab is so that promotion or emails that are deemed to be promotion um, basically go there. Emails like Jumia, if, you are, if you're a Jumia customer, all the Jumia promotions and all that, you will never see them in your inbox because they are regarded as promotions. So they go there. But you want your emails to get in, at least the best places you want your email to be is in that inbox or in the promotional tab. Those are the two best places for your email to appear in. So one of the first steps we need to, we need to um, get into is, the, is to make use of a ready-made email template. Now, um, there are many ways to create email templates. Some people try to, some people can create their own email template themselves by actually um, designing it using, or programming it using um, HTML and CSS. But that will need you to have like a, a very high level of, of programming skills and the rest. So using a ready-made email template basically means that you are already starting from an established foundation to create your email template instead of creating one from scratch. Um, if you have your send pulse on your laptop, you could just pull out your send pulse account and log in, and it goes straight to the email template um, section. And you can see that send pulse has already provided for you predefined or pre-designed, sorry, pre-designed email templates already. Okay, it's loading up. So right here, you can see all these email templates that have been pre-designed for you. Mind you, all these design here are mobile friendly. They're, in my, they're all mobile first, okay? So that's your first step. Your first step is to find a platform that provides a already designed email template, ready to ready to ready made email template. Okay. So, master mobile friendly email designs. Now, um, in twenty eighteen, forty six percent. I think now is more than that, uh, because the in Nigeria alone, um, the mobile, the smartphone usage has increased. Penetration of mobile smartphone usage has increased. I don't really have the number here. But in 2018, well, 46% of all emails opens were made on mobile devices. Now, we, are, we have situations where people open emails multiple times. So let's say you send an email out like um, a very important email to, to, your, to your email list and they, they receive your email in their, in their office and they open your email on your laptop. They can get back home on in transit. They want to check the email again and they open it again on your phone. So that means that regardless of the platform, you want your emails to appear, you want your emails to look good, and you, you want your emails to perform well. <clears throat> Just a minute. Just let me know if you can still see my screen. 
I just had yeah. it. Okay, good. Wait. Yes. Okay, good. <clears throat> Okay, so what are the things you need to look at when it comes to mobile friendly? The size of your fonts, the size of your. Don't worry, we'll, we'll go we'll go into practical examples so that you, this whole thing will be pretty much straightforward and easy for you. But let's just go through the theory first before we go into that. The size of your font, the size of the images in your email, all right, and um, and that that's basically and the kind of colors you use are uh, they look differently on mobile and they look differently on on the web. So you have to use colors, images, font sizes, and all that are universally the same across devices. So we have, I'm sure you have received emails that are pretty much horizontal, okay, um, or vertical emails, like emails that are just long and emails that are very wide. Um, in order for your emails to fit properly, we should be looking at, say, 200 pixel, we will, go, we will go into those design specifications shortly, about 200 pixel in terms of width, and then the, the length can be as long as you want. All right, let me just quickly look for an example. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. So let's, let's just try to make it as practical as possible. Okay, so for this, let's, let's use, um, let's create an email template not using this predefined, we'll basically choose from a um, ready-made ready -made option. Let's just click on add template here. And then let's use um, the template layout editor, which is the fastest and easiest way to create your email template. Okay. So on SendPost, this, this is how your email template editor will look like once you get into, into this page. Okay, so now we need to have like a mobile friendly email design. And I mentioned that your email design should, the, the length of your email should be somewhere, should be somewhere around 600 pixels. So let's look at this. This is the section, this white section right here, all the way down is a section where um, that will be predominantly displayed on the mobile. If you come on preview right here, let's load. You can see that SendPost gives you your laptop or web view and then gives you the mobile view on the right, right here. Okay, so you can see how the, the email template will look like on a mobile phone and you see how it looks like on a laptop. You can see here that the company logo is on the left. Meanwhile, on the mobile, design, on the mobile um, view is at the center of the page. Okay, so let's take note of this while we keep going. Okay, one thing you should look at is if we click here, Let's click out. If we click at email body, we can see that the email width, if you're looking at my screen, you can see that the email width, all right, is about 600 pixels as suggested or as advised. The email width should be like 600 pixels as advised. Email should receive from, from um, uh, which of these companies are there to all these standards, like um, both emails and the rest. If you see SendPost gives you a maximum of 700 pixels, which is a little bit wide, but regardless of that, these sizes or this email width will always fit in both the emails on your mobile phone and the emails on your um, laptop, just like the email I sent you. All right, let's go, let's go on. All right, so now we're moving into more specifics, like writing your subject line properly. Now, writing your subject line has a lot to do with, number one, the design and also the performance of that email. We all know, we all receive emails every day and we have email subject line that we are most likely to open. And then we have email subject line that we are least likely to open. So uh, an email subject line should not be misleading. So many marketers have tried to use misleading methods to create email subject lines to try to make you open it. And once you get into the email, the content of your email does not match the content of your subject line. Now, this can give you a very high open rate but will basically increase your unsubscribe rate. So you can see that you can have to choose if you want to lose your customer uh, in exchange for high open rate, or if you want to keep your customer and get them coming back uh, in exchange for a pretty, a pretty decent performance. Okay, so what are the things we need to look at when it comes to subject line? Number one is that subject line should be personal, engaging, and relevant. Now we talked about relevance. Like the email I sent you, I just wrote email design best practices. 
And um, basically, I assume that that is relevant because that's what we're talking about. One other thing I could have used in my email service line was to say free webinar. Okay, so free webinar, or we'll say web, or I use the word webinar, or I use the word live training. So if I use the word live training or free webinar, it gives you like, like uh, it gives you an idea that okay, this is a training that I am willing to take. So let me open email and take the train. That is another option I could have used for my email. All right, engaging and personal. One of the option about personal is that you can actually call the name of your recipients directly in your email. You can say, praise, this is for you uh, as your service line. And you can call my name. How do you get my name? It's basically how you set up your email term, email contact list. So you, in your contact list, you should have the name of your, of your recipients, their phone number, and their email. Now, not all of us could have their phone numbers, but we should have their name. If you go online and you see all these free giveaways, like free ebooks, they're always going to ask you for just email. All right. But I used to advise because you want to add some level of personality and being some, some, somewhat personal with your, con your contact list, always ask for their name, all right? You may not have their full name, bring right. your first name, so that you can um, actually reach out to them using their name. All right, do not use caps excessively. I, I've seen emails that any, well, any email you receive with full caps, I think my brain regard it as a spam. You're trying to catch my attention, and I obviously don't want to read whatever it is you have in that email. So try to just be, Try to use sentence case. Sentence case is the first letter of the sentence is capital letter, and the rest are in a sentence. All right, using caps shows some level of aggression, makes it seem like you are shouting at the person, trying to catch your attention to open your email. And um, your email will have a, a highest likelihood of getting thrown into the spam folder. All right, try to check your spelling, incorrect punctuation, incorrect spelling. It's also a big issue um, and contentious words. Now there are words, um, uh, contentious words, uh, also look for, look out for buzzwords or stop words. Now what are buzzwords, what are stop words? Um, in the, the email marketing world or the email marketing check system is controlled by some bots. And these bots are designed to protect users and uh, to adhere to the laws the, the laws that guide email marketing. So let's pause here. Let's pause here. Let's take a step back. What are the laws that guide email marketing? All right. I'm sure some of us will be surprised that, wow, there are laws that guide email marketing. And um, there are systems that are put in place to make sure that these laws or these systems are, are going through check and balances in order to protect um, Everyone who use email marketing. Okay, just a moment. I want to pull up a slide that shows some of the predominant laws that we need to look out for. Yeah, this is it. Let me know if you can still see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay. Great. All right. So here are the laws that guide email marketing. We have four to five, depending on four to five or six, because Nigeria also has a law now. Um, so we'll talk about the Nigerian law. I'll be doing a training maybe next year that breaks down all these laws to make it easy for you. If you are running a financial institution, a consultancy business or the rest, you need to understand this in detail. Um, the, the world is becoming a data-driven world. And um, anywhere there is money is made, policies are put in place to control, to check, and to protect. So what is the Can Spam Act? All right, let's just Google that real quick. Let's Google that real quick. The Can Spam Act. All right, so the Can Spam Act was enacted into law by the US government. And um, this law is basically designed to protect against um, non solicited pornography and marketing. So, non solicited, I did, I did not ask for the message. I did not ask for the email you are sending me. I have not given you explicit permission to reach out to me. But I'm receiving your emails. Okay. Are you going against the CanSpam Act? Yes. Why? Number one, you haven't been given explicit permission. And I, an idea of explicit permission is um, you go to a site, you see a free ebook, and the person says, I will give you this free ebook. Just give me your email address. 
That means you are exchanging your data in exchange for the value that person is promising. That it means you've given the person explicit permission to send them whatever content they want to send them in exchange for the free ebook you are receiving. Non-explicit permission includes dubious means of collecting email addresses, harvesting email addresses from LinkedIn, from all these places, right? Now, what do we do if we find ourselves in a situation where we need to actually send non-solicited um, emails, like emails that you haven't been given the permission. How do you go about that? Because I know some of businesses try to build their marketing by bootstrapping and they go ahead to find email addresses and all that. Now, if you buy email addresses, there are sites or there are businesses online that claim that they sell high converting emails. Your emails will most likely go to spam. That's one thing that will happen. Number two, your IP address and sender ID is most likely going to be flagged, okay? And when, that, when it gets flagged, your email delivery rate starts to drop. And last but not the least, if everything runs, if, you, if it's very, very mischievous, your email can actually get blocked. Your, your um, sender ID can actually get blocked. On Send Plus platform, the moment we realize that your emails go against any of this policy, the moderation team will block your email and send you an email informing you of the issue and asking you to respond based on some questions they ask just to, just to make sure that your, your sender ID and your IP does not get flagged or does not get blocked internationally. Right, so we'll get into the details of this law. It's doing, we don't need to read all this. I'll try to break it down as we go on. Then we have the CASL law. The CASL law is basically similar to the CANSPAM Act, but this was enacted by the Canadian government, all right, to protect their people. Now, the, the, the CANSPAM Act, CASL law, are basically laws that work um, as an addition to each other. So imagine someone gets penalized for, by the CANSPAM Act and also get penalized by it's, it's crazy. Then we have the Privacy and Electronic Commission regulations. Then we have the GDPR policy. I'm sure some of us have heard about the GDPR policy. And this works for the data capture and data usage and basically very active in the European Union. So if you send, if you send sites, any site that runs online, any website, um, obviously every website is online, but every website you, you go online and that, uh, that uh, are adhering to these policies, you will see that at the bottom of the site, you will say, we use your cookies, accept or not, all right? So that, that is basically going, um, obeying or adhering to the GDPR policy and the privacy and electronic data protection regulation. So the whole idea here is give people that, which I'm going to send you email, okay? And um, you have the right to opt out from my email. That's number one. Number two, I'm not going to send you email again if you've opted out from my email. I'm going to make sure I respect your privacy and I respect your access of data. Then in Nigeria, we have the Nigerian uh, National, I don't know what's it again, NDE something, something privacy, Data Protection Regulation Commission, I think so. Nigerian Data Protection Regulation Commission, I think. So they basically, that law was, was um, drafted in 2018, and I think it was enacted in 2019, or it was put in, it was enforced or put into motion in 2019. I don't know what the plan the government have for that policy is, but what I, last time I read about it, I think they are encouraging companies to get, um, to get serious with it. Uh, but, well, businesses need to be aware that that's in place. I, I, you know, a Nigerian government can be, one day can, they can become pretty much serious about businesses that go against that law or that policy. All right, let's, now we've talked about the policy. So we're given, we have given context to why certain things needs to be done as we go on. So just remember there's a law now, and when I refer to it, you have a better understanding of why we are referring to it. All right. Subject line is advised to be 50 characters long. Now, this is not a law or, a, or this is not written in stone. It's basically an advice that, uh, we, that states that um, 50 characters are basically saying your subject line, you don't want your subject line to get truncated or to get shortened on mobile devices. So you want someone to be able to read your entire subject line regardless of the device they are on, all right? So if someone is reading your subject line on their laptop, 
you want them to be able to read completely. And if they're on their phone or, or on a smaller device, you also want them to read your subject line completely. One other thing is to consider using emojis. Now, emojis are, we are, we are all social beings and emojis has a way of further, um, further proving or further increasing the emphasis of the emotions we're trying to portray. For example, if you're saying you're doing giveaway and you put an emoji of someone's face with money on it, it gives an idea that there's, there's money there or there's, there's money to be collected or there's, you know, there's a woof to be shared. Some, some way of adding some sort of um, personality and character to your email subject line. So you can experiment with it. This doesn't just have to do with social businesses. Banks can try it also. Consultancy agencies can try it also. Try to be more uh, you know, personal with your customers. All right, so we've talked about that. Let's talk about brand optimization. Let's talk about brand optimization. Now, when you sign up on SendPulse, and for, for those who have reached out to me uh, in the process of setting up their account, and they, they, they're like, okay, what do I need to do? I always advise these five things. Number one, set up your account uh, with your company detail. Number two, always use the domain-based email address. Do not use Gmail to send emails. Number three, set up your domain authentication. It's called email authentication. We'll go into that in details very soon. Number five, make sure that your sender ID is personal. Make sure your sender ID is personal. So what does it mean to ensure brand optimization? Now, we, all, we, we know about phishing emails or phishing emails, sorry. Phishing emails are emails that try to act like the original email provider um, sender in order, for, for, in order to get you to divert information to them, All right? It's just the way the criminals will give you a call and say they're calling you from their bank. It's exactly what you're doing, but this time via email. So if you receive email from Gmail, from GT Bank, for example, from Access Bank, for example, Access Bank has Complete, authorized, complete optimization for their brand, that if a, a scammer decides to send you a phishing email, you can actually check your previous GT Bank emails and use that to compare with the new emails and you see consistency across all emails you receive. For example, you can see this Grammarly as an example that, that um, this is a service that Grammarly offers as Grammarly Premium. And you can see that their info are sent to Grammarly.com is exactly consistent. You can decide to check all this and confirm or validate the information before or after opening them before you send or reply the emails. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> so branding is has a lot to do with how you project yourself, how you project each of your services, each of your products. This is way beyond just the, 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 the logos and all those things. Your words, your emails, your names, and everything. If you use G, if you use both, you will see that you always receive promotions and all that from a guy called Uche from Bolt, and it's consistent. I don't know if the Uche from Bolt is still working with Bolt, but Bolt will hardly change that name because that has become like a brand fixed for their customers. Just like we have Leo from or from UBA Bank, and we have Kiki from Stan, from Sterling Bank. You will see the consistency in how. They try to personalize and actually try to keep consistent emails from uh, to their customers. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Let's talk about um, preheader. What are preheaders? Preheaders are the um, summary or the highlights after your subject line. You could go ahead and check your Gmail right now and you, or your email address, email right now. You see, after your subject line, you see those grayed out text. Right here, they are called the preheader. So the job of the preheader is to provide some sort of context to the subject line. Okay, it is to it's it's also to assist. For example, if I say, let's use this as an example on my screen. So this example says that um, they say never go on sale. This never go on sale, but they just did. And now I don't know up, I don't know up from down. Left from right. So basically, it's give a context. It's basically a sentence continuing the subject line. Okay. And it's visible on the inbox preview. So it's important that you also take note of this. Now, the idea here is to 
add help marketers or email, email marketers to add another level of validation or level of the reason why you need to open this email. All right. The reason why you need to open this email. Okay. And we advise that you stick to 40 to 70 um, characters and um, try to keep it short. Try to keep it short. And it's very important. It's a very important point of your email. We'll go into this very soon practically. Okay. So let's talk about adopt an excellent email layout. Now, before we talk about this, let me show you this graph. This is called, let's see, this is called, um, there's a word for it, the pyramid, inverted pyramid of design, of writing, inverted pyramid of writing, in fact, inverted pyramid of writing. When you're writing emails, um, the whole idea is to put all the essential information at the top. Now, the idea here is that if the user does not read the email, at least you've projected or you sent the important information you want to send to them on top. Then you can add additional information. And lastly, you can add the least important information. Let me use my email I sent to you as an example. Um, just look for that and put it up. Okay. So uh, in my email, the first thing you see when you open my email is that banner. Now, the, the banner basically tells you everything you want to know. Email design best practices, November 23rd, 12th noon. Tells you it's a training. I try to make it as simple as possible. I should have added free training or webinar or, or to identify that it's a training or webinar. That is one thing I'm taking notes. We learn every day. But it's important that the next thing I did here is to give you some sort of context as to this, the importance of my email that says design plays a vital role in success of an email marketing campaign. So it's imperative to follow industry design, design industry email design best practice. Now, this is the first stage of my hierarchy of my pyramid. The next stage of my pyramid is the the next stage of my pyramid will be the additional information. So the additional information I added here is, when is this training? Thursday, I mean, Tuesday, what is the topic? Okay, and everything around that. Now the least important information is the information that says, if you have questions, just reply your, your questions. I'm always here to help. It could also be anything at the, at the bottom. But these are the areas where you know that the, your user will not spend so much time to read, all right? And it could be somewhere around your call to action, which is that bo blue button I put there for register. So um, human beings, we skim, all right? We do not actually read. And if you come to the email, the first thing you will see will be the first banner. And if the banner makes sense to you, you'll read the first paragraph. You will most likely not read any other thing. And you scroll down and just click on the blue button that says register. Okay, like what, this, what else do you want to say? I already know what you're saying. Let me register for it. So that's why your call to action has to be bold, has to be a color that stands out from the white space. So that is one reason why using white space is essential so that the, the call to action can actually stand out and project itself to the cost to the user. All right, so let's, re, let's re, review the excellent, um, the layout. We've gone through the fact that your email should be about 300, 600 pixels wide. It's gonna be wider than that, but that is an advisable, if, um, size. Um, your vertical layout remains the better option over horizontal layout. Now, horizontal layouts are longer, just like your info paper. When you put it on the, on the horizontal, it's very longer. So you don't expect readers. Readers don't read from left to right all the way. They read the skim from top to bottom, right? You stick to the inverted pyramid design, crafting an email template as it makes a reader slightly move to the desired action, just like my email. Uh, the desired action is the register button. Okay, aim at 60-40 text to image ratio. Let's talk about text to image ratio. What does it mean? Why is it important? Okay, now we talked about emails going to the promotional tab or the promotion tab. One of the important reasons why emails go to the promotion tab or just go to your promotion tab and look for emails that are there. There are reasons why they are there. 
One reason is the kind of words you use. For example, if your word contains, if your emails, I mean, contains words like discounts, 20% off, discount, free, sale, anything that sounds like promotion, anything that sounds like sale, Black Friday, and all that, your email will get dropped to the promotion tab. Okay, now that's one reason why your email goes to the promotion tab. Another big reason is the text to image ratio. If your email contains way more image, if your email contains way more images than text, Gmail might flag that email as a promotion email and then put it in the promotion tab, all right? You want to make sure that your email has some balance as a text to image ratio. So that means that your image, your email should contain 60% of text and 40% of pictures, right? Write messages that load fast. What does this mean? What does it mean to write messages that load fast? Image heavy emails tend to be flagged as spam by subscriber email providers. Image heavy emails, the images that are lighter than other images. And when you're sending your send post, when you're sending your campaign to send post, you get to the last page where the review page, where send post tells you the total size of your email, all right? You are basically sending a file to another person's computer that that file also get loaded on the person's computer. So you want to make sure that the file get loaded pretty fast and does not get stuck along the way. Or the person doesn't have to open your email and start waiting endless minutes for images to load. So look into that. Make sure that if you're adding um, things like uh, animated vi videos or animated images in your email, try to keep it as light as possible. If you're adding vid um, images, try to use PNG version instead of the JPEGs. PNGs are lighter than JPEGs. JPEGs can be pretty much heavy for emails. Try to use PNGs than JPEGs. Also, if you notice while creating your send post email, there is no place to upload videos. Instead, you are to upload your video on YouTube or any other source, preferably, you, preferably YouTube. If you don't want that video to be public, you can make the video unavailable on your YouTube channel. Then you come here, you come to send post, and then you put that link to the video you've uploaded, and that video becomes available in your email. So you do not have to upload everything in your email. Use short sentences as well as paragraphs while also using divided line and spacing to separate section of your content. This is basically about design, basically about creating readability. There's a reason why newspapers have sections and there's a reason why newspaper uses columns, uses separations, uses dividing lines, just to make sure that you are able to follow along if it's content heavy. Um, for example, if you are sending out newsletters, you don't want to send out newsletters that are very content heavy, that I don't know where it starts, where it ends. It looks so messed up, it looks so model up. Okay. So let's now talk about the last part, your footer. Now the footer is the last section of the email at the bottom, the complete bottom. That's why it's called the footer just after our fit. So what does the footer really do? The footer basically adds all your legalities, all your um, promises, everything, your social content and unsubscribe button at the bottom. If you receive emails from banks, banks will add their legal disclaimer at the bottom. If you receive emails from, you know, a uh, sensitive institution like medical institution, they have a disclaimer at the bottom. If you receive email from data, data companies, they have a disclaimer at the bottom. So depending on your business, you can write a very short disclaimer at the bottom of your email. That's where it's supposed to be. So the bottom of footer of your email, that's where it's supposed to be. All right, so your, an excellent footer should contain your brand's contact details. And this is a no-brainer. It's like creating a, like creating a letter ed, a corporate letter ed, and then there's no contact information at the bottom. Contact information of letter is always at the bottom. Some put it on the top, but it's, it's nicer to be at the bottom so that people can actually read all the important information so that you are, you are not modeling up all your information at the top. So all the things that is not really paramount or important to the content of your email, just put it at the bottom, which includes your uh, contact details. You always have to have your contact details at the bottom. Now, you do not have to add this every time you're creating your emails. I will show you how to get this done without having to create your emails every single time. All right, links to any part of your, to key part of your website. Now, um, most people link straight up to their homepage. Some people can link to their products page. Some people can link to their services page, but always have your website link at the bottom. Social buttons. 
Now, this is important. If your business is not social, at least your business should have LinkedIn page or Facebook page. Always have a social link at the bottom of your email. Now, an unsubscribe link. Now, why is this unsubscribe link important? And why must it be visible on mobile devices? You should not hide your unsubscribe link in a way that users will not see it. It has to be visible because of the Scan Spam Act. If you come to the Can Spam Act, and um, you could see this section that says unsubscribe compliance. It states that there should be a visible and operable unsubscribe mechanism to present it in all emails. Consumer opt-out requests are honored within 10 business days. Sendpost does that for you automatically and advise you to take a look at it again. Opt-out lists, also known as suppression lists, are used only for compliance purposes. So now, you have to have an unsubscribe link at the bottom of your email. This is apart from a design perspective, but also from the policy perspective. No email with an unsubscribe button will get delivered to the inbox of the customer. If the email peradventure finds its way out of your campaign and to the customer's inbox, it will not get into the inbox. It will go straight up to the spam folder. Even if you follow all the other rules and you and you forget the unsubscribe button, is that simple? Is that serious? They take this pretty seriously. An idea of why an unsubscribe button is important is: imagine you are walking on the road and then you see a supermarket, and the supermarket said, "Come in, come and see what, what we have to sell." And then the moment you come into the the supermarket, they lock all the doors and you can't go out. So you, you can't go out, you have to buy something. And after you buy something, you can't go out. It's like you are trapped in the supermarket. That is this, an idea of not giving people the freedom to choose to stop receiving messages from you. Now, so many users may not opt out. In fact, if you follow the policies or all the, the, the guidelines, you will see users basically not unsubscribe. Your unsubscribe rate should be the, no, the lowest, should be the lowest. Um, if you um, do things right. So we have a user that out of 10,000 emails, they receive one unsubscribe or two unsubscribe in like a month, two months. Imagine how clean his contact list is, how engaging his emails are, and how um, inviting his, customer, his emails are to customers. They, they may not buy from him at the point, but they would rather prefer to keep receiving emails from him. So aside from email designs, Free email frequency, do not bombard users. I know you must have received two emails from me, but there was a mistake in the first email, so I sent the second one to cover up with the first one. But in the sense of it, do not bombard users. Give them some time to read the emails before you send new ones. All right, so let's get into it. Let's get into it practically. Uh, I'm sure you've taken notes on all the things we discussed. We're gonna experiment them straight up here. So here's your blank page. The first thing, what, it, what, what are we gonna do about the email? Let's say, this is the section where you enter your pre header right up here. Your pre header is going to be right up here. Now, the, if you look at the pre header anatomy, you see you have a section right here to enter a description, a short description of your email. And then you see another section right here to say view this email online. This is basically to give users the option to up to view your email outside of your email um, service. So they can click on that button and it opens a new tab and they can read your email from there. And we have company logo. You can choose to add a company logo or not, but you have a company logo. Then you have this section. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to remove all this section and rebuild them over again, just to give you an idea of how to do that. Now, you need to have consistency. I will stress this again. Brand consistency. Brand consistency is important. If you don't have a brand structure or a brand manual, you could get one. You could design one. Colors has to be the same. Um, you can't use, there are different kind of blue. You can't use Hassan blue, you can't use teal blue. And then if you come to your email and use sky blue, it, it can't work. It has to be the same. GT Bank emails are all orange, all right? Access Bank emails are all the same color. Stan Bank emails are all blue. The blue is consistent. The logos are consistent. You won't see, um, the logos are consistent. You will see that this is, yes, this is GT Bank email. Yes, this is this email, all right? This is, Uber email, all right? You do not want to create the room for a scammer to see that there is lack 
or there is a slack in your emails and find a way to deceive your users. All right, so let's create the design right now. I'll remove this and I will try to redesign the email I sent to you. So before we do this, let's close this. Before we do this, let's set up your account the right way. All right, you set your send post account. Let me load this up here. Your send post account, kindly go to your account here, right here, you see my name up here. You go to account settings. And under account settings, you will see your contact information. Kindly fill up this page, enter your currency, your time zone. Time zone is pretty much important, so please specify time zone. If you're in Nigeria, use Lagos. Your picture, if you have a company logo, use a company logo. If you don't have a company logo and it's a private business, use your face or use something that's iconic about you. Branding is important. Now, you can see that I use a Gmail account. Please, this is this might be how you created your SendPos account, but this shouldn't be how you should send out emails. So we're going to get there now. Click on additional information. And right here, add your company name. Add your website, website URL. Every information you need. If you do not have a website URL, go to killservers.com.ng. You can get one for 1,500 naira. It's a .com ng. They're not expensive. You can get one for 1,500. You could buy a server for 3,005 for 5,000. It's just about 6,005 annually. So basically, like for your business, your business can, your business needs that investment of 65, 7,000, or 10,000 every single year to maintain your corporate email and to maintain your corporate domain. Okay. I will drop a link in, in the email when I'm sending you the, the, um, the video to rewatch. I will send you the link so you can register. If you don't have a domain, please, you need to get one. Enter your industry type, your source of mailing list. Please, yeah, just add subscribers. Don't you choose any other option. Just choose subscribers. Your size of your email list, whatever number you choose to add here, add it. The dispatch frequency, you can just add weekly or daily. And here you have it. You click on save. You can see that you, you, can't, you don't even have an option to cancel. You can only save or remind me later. <laughs> so let's, let's go on. All right, so let's come to company information. So here you have the company information that has been entered here already. But here you can validate or refresh that, okay, this is your company, this is your corporate phone number. Uh, this is your corporate phone number. It shouldn't be your private one. This is just an example. Then uh, your address, enter your address here. So you can see address that says somewhere on earth. Enter your address here. Uh, there you have it. Now, this information you put here will be the information that will be available at the footer of all your emails, okay? This will be available at the footer of all your emails. So you do not have to enter them every single time you're sending, it, sending out a new email. The next step will be to go to service settings on the left, this blue left section, click on service settings. So on the service settings, you can see here that I have my, priv my private Gmail. What I want to do is to add a new email address, which is this from address. And then let's add Chris um, at company name.com. And then your sender name, just follow, be personable. So I will use, for example, Mr. Aziz, I will say Aziz. I will say Aziz from company name. This is a very best way to go about a sender name. Do not add things like, except you are sending like automated emails that you can say something like no reply or those, those are automated emails. But communication email should have a name to it. Uh, Sterling Bank has taken it a step ahead to even use Kiki from Sterling to send you guys, to send us um, automated emails. All right, which is from both. So this is pretty much personable. When you click on add, once you add, um, send post will send an email to this email address to validate and confirm that you own it. So once we're done with that, you have the email here. So the next step will now be to create your email authentication. Now I won't go into this because of time. I will send you the link on how to go about this, a guide. Let me take note of that. Okay. I'll send you a guide on how to go about this, but you need to connect your domain SPF and DKIM record. You need to connect your DMAC policy. I need to, just these two is very important. Just these two is very important. So now that we're done with this, let's then, let's then go back to create our email templates. All right. So let's go back here. Let's click on add templates. Click on template layout. This is basic. 
You can use basic commas, three column text, or news, whatever you choose, but I like basic. All right, so I'll basically recreate the email I, I used, I, I sent out. But let's look at the footer again. So the footer says copyright current year. Let's pick the current year automatically. You don't need to add anything here. Current year, sender company. So this is your company name you've added. You, you mean, remember when we added it right here on account settings? Okay, an account sentence. So all the information you added in account census, it will show up here. Your company will show up here. Your company email address will show up here. Now, if you have a disclaimer message or any special order message you want to add, you can actually come down. Let's just drag uh, a text field and drop it at the bottom here. And then you can add all those information there. Okay, if you don't, like I don't, let's go, let's go on. Now, you can see that this email has been sent to you because you're a customer or subscriber of company name. Okay, now you have to sh show a reason why the email is being sent. They're either a customer, they're either a subscri subscriber, whatever. It has to be, a, don't need to change the send post has added this for you by default, don't stress yourself. And then you can see the unsubscribe button. Please do not remove this as we discussed earlier, uh, referring to the policy, referring to the standard, just leave that there, okay? All right, now the important thing to look at again is your social media, social media. So on the left, on the right, sorry, on the right here, you can set your social media, let's use gray, and um, Facebook, Twitter, what's this? Let's use Instagram, then YouTube, mm, let me use WhatsApp instead, WhatsApp. So basically you copy the links and you paste them here. I don't have links for all this for now, so I'll leave that there blank. So please do not leave empty links in your emails. Do not leave empty links. Try to fill up all the links in your emails. So you can see your WhatsApp link, you add it here. Your Instagram link, you add it here. Your Twitter link, you add it here. Your Facebook link, you add it here. All right, so we're done with the footer. Pretty straightforward, pretty fast, pretty easy. The next step, let me remove, um, let me add a pre header So right here, you basically type in your pre header All right, so we're done with that. So leave that there. Now, I have a picture, a banner that I've designed, and that banner already contains my logo. So I do not need to have duplicate logos in my email template. So I basically remove this, and then I go to my system and upload the banner that I've created before, right? So I'll just click on upload, click here. So here's the banner I've created before. To upload the banner, and if the banner is more than two MB, it will not be uploaded because it's too big. All right here, yeah, so we have the banner. But what I want to do now is that I want to say hi to your name first, just in case all you read in this email is just the banner. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click on text, drag it on top right here. I'll remove all this section. And I want to personalize it. I want to call your name. All right, so how do I call your name? So I will say hello. I come to variables right here and I find your name in variables. Okay, now the name variables are always attached when you are creating a campaign. So if you don't find, find the variables you need here, all you need to do um, is to check your email template. If for the email you are sending out, let me go to email list. And um, in my email template, let's use this for example, the name, I basically look for the variable. So what are variables? Variables are basically the colon names. So all this stuff here are called variables, okay? You can create additional variables if you choose to. What I need right here is this variable called name and it's spelled with a capital letter N and small letter A, small letter M and small letter E. Now you see I'm taking note of the case, meaning that I'm taking note of the capitalization. How is it capitalized? Is it capitalized with a big N or is it a small N? You can see that phone number is capital letter P, but gender is G, small letter G, Please take note of that when you're creating personalization. It has to match what is available on the email target in on the email li um, list in target. All right, so let's go back to our email templates. So when you say name, I use a curly brace. This is called a curly brace. So I basically add a double curly brace. One, sorry, one, two. Then I enter name just the way it is in my email template. Capital letter N, small letter A, M, E. Then I close it with a double curly brace. Tum -tum. Put a comma, and there is your, there you have it. 
when this email gets sent, it will pull all, it will get all your names from this list and then add it here, replace this with your name. So that's how you got your name in the emails I sent out to everyone. All right. So hello name, if all you do is read this banner, that's fine by me. Or you want to keep reading? I remove this header, I don't need it here. Or I can just say free. Sorry about that. So I could just say free email design class. Okay. So here I added my content. Now let me just go copy more content from somewhere else. Um, because I'm lazy to type. And there you have it. I have my contents ready and I have my button. Let me show you how to get a button. Okay, we just come to buttons, click, drag, paste it up. Okay, so here's the button. Let me change the color to blue. I like blue because it's, it's, it's matched to the brand color. Okay, so let me use the blue, right? Let me, in the button I will say register just like the email I sent to you. Okay, there you have the button. Where does the button link to the link? Okay, I use I send it to the Zoom registration link right here. Okay, pasted the link in there. And there you have it, your email template is ready and good to go. Now, look through your email to make sure there is no misspelling, there is no punctuation mark problem. If you have problem with, it, with that, please don't stress yourself. Use Grammarly, Grammarly is very, it's free. So you can use Grammarly to check your email for spelling problems and all that. And um, once you're sure there's no spelling mistake, the punctuations are okay, um, you can now go ahead and preview your email. And this preview is pretty much important so you can see where there's problem with your email. As you can see on the web or laptop, the email looks pretty good. I don't like how this button is not aligned with the text, so I will fix that. Let's check the mobile view. On the mobile view, I think I like how it looks like. So you can see now, you see that um, on the mobile view, the button is aligned pretty much well, but on the web view, the button is not aligned with the, it might be a very minor thing, but some people like to make sure everything is okay. So let me go back. So what do I do? I need it to align like this, all right? On the right here, I look at padding, inner padding. So left, I just need to pad the left. So I go to left. Let me make it 30. So you can see I made it 30 because this is also 30, so they're on the same line. Let me go back and preview. So you can see that I go through preview multiple times to make sure that my email looks pretty okay. I scroll down, it's there. I come here, so I scroll down, it's there. You can see that change did not affect mobile, but affected the web version. And this is pretty good because you're able to make sure that your email looks neat on both sides. Now, my company name, it's NBSEM, just as we have it here. Let's go back and show you. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? Let's go back to account settings. I just needed to see how pretty easy it is. So let's go back to account settings. A uh, little company information. So you can see company name is NBSEM. Okay, you right here, you can see that company name is NBSEM. Address is somewhere on earth. Let's see address, the address is somewhere on earth. So you can see that it appears in all your emails at the bottom right here, at the bottom right here. Okay. This unsubscribe is there. Now this SendPost logo is there because this is a free plan. So please, if you want to remove the SendPost logo, upgrade to a paid plan, you'll be able to remove the SendPost logo. But let's go back. So that's, there you have it. Your email template is ready. Your email design is ready. Um, so I'll go through a, a last recap. Let me save this and exit and um, save it with my template name and ask if there's questions. All right, so let's do a recap again. What are the things we need to make sure we have a beautifully designed email template? I'm sure someone has a question. How do you design that banner? How do you design that beautiful banner and all that? Well, that is another course on its own. You can actually get a designer that does it for you. You can use design tools. Um, you can go online and Google for free design tools. I believe there are plenty of free design tools out there. 
but this design was sent to me by the designer, but you can actually find pretty much um, easy design tools on the internet to use, or you can get a designer for, to do that for you. Okay, so quick recap. Yes, quick recap. Your email should be about 600 pixels wide. Pixel is the measurement used for web design or anything that is on the website, on the internet, or on the web. There are other kind of design, um, there are other kind of units of measurement, but pixel is a widely used and widely adopted uh, uh, units of measurement. <clears throat> um, always use the virtual, the vertical layout instead of the horizontal layout. This is to make sure that horizontal layout looks nice on, on web as if you're using your laptop or your desktop, but will not look nice on, or will not look well on, on, um, on um, mobile phones. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, stick to inverted pyramid design, meaning that keep all the important information at the, at the top of the email, and then try to craft the email in such a way that you lead users to the action you want them to take. Okay, aim for a 60% text and 40% pictures. Write messages that load fast. Try to make sure there's no spelling mistakes, punctuation mistakes, and all that. Use short sentences as well as paragraphs while using divided lines and all that. Let's look at our divided lines. I'm sure I didn't mention that in the template. So divided lines are basically used to demarcate or make emails pretty much readable. And they don't look modeled up together or messed up together. Okay, so let's scroll to the bottom. Now you can see that there is a space here. Okay, if you say I can, I can move it around. I can move it around. It's actually a space. Let me delete it and show you how it's done. So you can see that there is no space between the register button section and then the copyright section. So what do I do? I basically go to the separator, drag the separator, and you can see these gaps between them. I put the separator there, and you can see there is a line. But I also want it to look pretty much, I will change the background to nothing, okay? Let me change the background to gray. So this gives you an idea of separation between the two sections. So you can decide to use a line, you can decide to use dotted line, you can decide to use all this. Gives you an idea of separation. So this is the end of your email, but these are other additional information. Gives you some sort of neat email. If you're writing a very, if you're writing newsletter or like very content heavy email, um, let's say you want to increase the width of the email to say 700, and um, you want to add more content information. We can decide to use sections, and sections can be done to used to break down email or make it more easy to understand. So for example, I want to describe something. So I have to, a section of two sections right here. Okay, one row, two columns, but I will put a picture on one, and I'll put text on the other. So this is an idea of just basically how you can make, be creative. Use the sections to cut it down into four sections, three sections, you get one big section on the right, one small section on the left, one on the, and all that make it pretty much creative. You have all the tools at your disposal. All right, so let me remove that. I don't need it. I don't need it. Okay, so now I'm done with that. You have the power now to create beautifully designed emails in less than five minutes. You can see how pretty much easy it is. You do not have to send out crappy emails. Um, if you need me to support you in creating your emails, I'm going to be taking questions right now. So if you have questions, please um, just unmute yourself and ask your questions. <clears throat>